And there's my, and there's the problem. Okay, this is some big stuff here, folks. This is 10 inches, super duper thick. This is gonna be the frame for our blast doors and they are 20 feet long, crazy stuff. So let's see if we can figure out how to manipulate it. I grabbed a big adjustable wrench because I think, here's my plan. My plan is I'm gonna bite it under here and use this to tip it up on its side. We'll see whether that works or not. All right, let's see if this gives me enough flavor. I, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Let's see. You might get footage of me squishing the crap out of my fingers. Oh, that's very nerve wracking. All right, we got it up, y'all. Now I gotta pull it down just a little ways. See if we can get our very first cut taken off this corner. Gotta take a 45, gotta take a 45 degree cut off of this corner, and we're gonna make a box. A really big, really heavy box. I'd be lying if I didn't admit the fact that one of the best things about building stuff is getting to buy new tools. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, so none of what's about to happen is good or smart. Um, there's eight feet of this extremely heavy beam hanging out over the end of this trailer. I don't have any good blocking for it to land on. I don't like what's about to go down. I do have steel toe boots on, but I also wanted to not kill my saw, so. Um, pretty excited to be making the last of the 45s and very very soon we're gonna be able to start putting this bad boy together so that's gonna be really really good stuff all right, let's have a little fun. Let's see if we can get this up here by myself. Put some gloves on here. So this is an eight foot piece. This is the four by eight. So let's see if we can get No big deal. Okay. All right. Well, we got it up there. Let's take a look. All right, everybody. So this is what we're working with here. I know that wasn't a great angle, but uh, we've squared up. We squared up this corner and that corner over there. And now we're gonna have to square up these corners. And by the looks of this, we might actually be a little bit long. So have to bust out a tape measure because I know that that corner is square so something's going on right here may have to cut this guy back a little bit we'll see okay the frame is all welded up and done which is really really exciting um, and now what we're gonna do is uh, and I apologize for getting started without you uh, we are punching holes uh, yes this is a tremendously cheap mag drill vivor um i'll do a full review on it um i only had about 12 holes to drill um and uh and i decided to go ahead and buy a cheap one over renting an expensive one uh, and then it turned out that i needed to drill some holes 
uh, in the money pit behind me. Um, so, and we'll talk a little bit about this uh, horrible uh, uh, silliness over here. Uh, so, we're gonna get started. Uh, I'm gonna shoot the little, little time lapse of punching some mag drill holes. If you've ever used a mag drill, these guys are these guys are wicked cool and they're super duper helpful. I mean, when we were drilling holes in the side of the skid steer uh, the other day, which I'm sorry I didn't film, uh, they, it was great. You could literally just stick the drill to the side and start drilling and it was super duper nice. Uh, we did explode like a $150 or $120 bit. Uh, we got the job done. We got the hydraulic lines changed that we couldn't get access to. So uh, we are going to punch these holes and then we're gonna punch holes uh, in here and then we're gonna connect the two and this is gonna be the, the slot for uh, uh, the pivoting hinge. Okay, we're making progress. All right, check this out, everybody. Now what we're working on, the next step is getting ready for this piece to get, uh, to be able to pass through this slot. So uh, we took the angle grinder and we're gonna cut the slot right here. So come along with us. Yes, did I put uh, one in the wrong spot? Yes, I did, absolutely. So I have already, uh, we patched the backside and filled in those holes. We'll grind that all down flat. It'll be pretty pretty. You'll never know that it went wrong. <laughs> so uh, we will go. So what we were looking for was we were looking for 12 inches to here and then 24 inches apart to there and then 12 more inches to there. So uh, four hinges, gonna be awesome, nice and strong. This is uh, 3 8 plate steel. Uh, it's gonna be welded to a C channel. You'll see all of that happens, it's gonna be great. Okay, here we are prepping for the hinge box. So we're wire brushing off the mill scale. We're getting ready to weld on. And this is just grinding on a bevel because this is 3 8 inch plate. So it's very, very thick stuff. And my little welder is not going to penetrate 3 8 So we just want to make sure that we can get a good bevel on that weld. Now we're going to set that box up. Pretty easy. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right here. So these are gonna act as spacers. I mean, they're washers, so they are spacers. So that works out. Uh, to keep this from being able to slide back and forth inside of that groove. Um, so uh, that the, the first one that I did, I didn't do it this way. And I just tried to get them straight and match this, this size and all that stuff. And it was just a super big pain. So I realized that on the second one, uh, why don't we just go ahead and build it out just like this, kind of get it loosely tightened. Uh, so there's plenty, still plenty of uh, movement, right? So the hinge still, still functions. I don't need it to be super duper strong. I just need it to not walk around a lot. So yeah, we're all ready to go. Start tacking up. Uh, then we'll do a little tack job and see how she's going. One thing I need you guys to remember is I am not a welder. I repeat, I am not a welder, but I can very ugly make things stick together. So feel free to, uh, 
pile on in the comments. First attempt at boxing off the back of this hinge pretty important we want to keep the concrete that's going to be poured around this frame soon uh, from being able to seep through this hole block the hinge stop the motion so got to box it out I do figure out later down the line a way simpler way to do this but this is my first attempt way more work than it needed to be This is the way I should have done it. Way simpler, just using a couple of quick pieces. You're seeing the, the way this hinge is gonna actuate here. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Now, wow, lots of fun burning myself. But that's the way we should have done it. Oh, all the fun, gentlemen, here we go. This guy started. Now that's gonna be a problem because that side's gonna want to slip. That that your side on that far end, that's the best hook I could get you. That. So I built this boom. If you check my shorts, you'll see kind of a walk around this boom. Really pretty crude, threw it together, had to have something that was strong enough to pick this thing up, reach over the trench, set it in place. Worked great. Uh, we didn't strap it up super well, and one of the guys ended up getting smacked in the hand by a hook, but over, overall it worked out really well. Yeah, if you want to flip it over, that works too. There you go. There you go. Maybe slide that back corner, that, that uh, the other side. Slide that back to the corner just a little bit. And the other one too. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. That's the least of our concerns at this point. The big calamity comes in all kinds of other problems. Hey, it picks it up. My boom works. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Should have set up a tripod so I could actually help. Somebody might want to get a hand on that when you can. If that one hook slips, we got big problems. Lower the blast door in now. Thanks a ton for watching, everybody. This has been a super long time coming, this episode. Getting these blast door frames set in place. The little one for the escape hatch also got pl placed as well. So, tons of fun. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.